Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's Land Geek Roundtable podcast, we've got Scott Bossman, who's not really a regular, but we'd love to have him as a regular. Scott, how are you? I'm doing well. Glad I could make it today. Yeah, Scott, you've been, you've been crushing it lately. And uh, I, love, I love listening to you and Mike on the, uh, the mastermind group do nightcap, which we'll, we'll talk about in a, in a little bit. Um, Bearland Aaron is on Bearland. Hey Mark, how you doing? He's, he's either, you know, it's going to be talking about land investing or hunting based on what he's wearing. So yeah, we're not I'm pretty sure. much dressed like a lumberjack today. It's great. It's great. We kid because we love. We kid because we love. And then, it's of course, good. the person who's going to be providing us the tip of the week, Eric, no nickname Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Happy to be here. And last but not least, you know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Just a reminder, today's podcast is sponsored by the amazing, the incredible GeekPay.io, the only automated set it and forget it collection system between lenders and borrowers. It automates notifications. It automates getting paid. ACH fails, which is like taking a check, credit card on file. It'll charge that. My default rate has gone down uh, in half. So from about 7% now to about 35 percent. Um, if you haven't checked it out, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash geekpay to get started or just go to geekpay.io. All right. So guys, what are we talking about today? We're talking about um, sales. Sales. So Scott Bossman, you want to tell us what happened on office hours on Monday? Sure. So last night I led office hours with the flight school folks and there's a few people in the group, you know, struggling with getting that first sale. Uh, they're all kind of itching uh, to get it done. And, um, you know, that first sale, I think it's huge because it, w once you get it, it just propels you into a whole new realm of, you know, you have confidence, you have validation, you know, you can just rinse and repeat and do it all over again. And I think people are really yearning for that. Um, but, but I think, you know, Early on, especially, and this was with me too, uh, we have a tendency to sometimes overanalyze things and that prohibits our progress moving forward. So I just encourage the folks last night to, you know, uh, try not to overanalyze every single stringent detail. If your chain of title looks good, if the numbers are good, sometimes you just gotta take a leap and just, you know, send that check out in the mail uh, for the first purchase even, first purchase, and then, you know, uh, for a first sale, uh, maybe, maybe not uh, expect a sale where the numbers are going to be absolutely perfect. As long as it propels you to the next phase, you know, what's wrong with the 250% return, that type of thing. So. Right, right. Bearland Aaron, do you remember your first sale and the, the steps that got you there and, and how it felt and any frustrations? Um, yeah, actually, I believe our first one, it was a really little property and it was in an area that, um, you know, wasn't probably the best area for me to bought a bunch of property in, but, um, it was a small property. I think we bought it for like 300 bucks. Um, and we sold it for, I want to say 1200 bucks. It wasn't a buildable lot or anything like that, but guy was going to camp on it and that sort of thing. Um, and we were in New York at the time and uh, kind of a family vacation with our high school band. It was a band trip to New York. And um, I remember waking up that morning and there was a strike notification. Um, it was a guy I'd talked to quite a few times, you know, and he just wasn't quite biting. And then one morning there was a, you know, deposit on it. I think I was so... I was so excited that I had uh, boxed you and you were, I think, at boot camp or something at the time. But 
Um, yeah, that was our first one. And that really, it really got everything pumping as far as the excitement, the knowledge that it can be done, all those sort of things. Um, yeah, it was a pretty good, pretty good deal. So. Yeah. How about you, Eric? Do you remember your first sale? Yeah. My first sale was a, was a really unique one. I've, I've talked about it before. Um, where basically the buyer wanted to pay me partially in precious metals. Um, he happened to be local. We met at a Starbucks. He gave me a bunch of silver coins and a couple of gold coins for the down payment. <laughs> and then we, uh, we closed at a title company and he gave me another whole bunch of silver coins to pay for about half the balance and then the rest was cash. So, um, you know, I mean, it was, uh, it was definitely my most, unique sale to to this point in time um but it also just you know that validation of seeing the whole process start to finish is is just huge you know it just gives you that that kind of courage and that that kick to just move forward and and know that uh the process works and uh you know you can do it many times over um but i think you know in terms of people having trouble getting that first sale. Um, you know, one thing that comes to mind for me is, you know, it's, it's easy when you haven't had a sale yet, or you've only just had a couple to be kind of over anxious about it. And I think that that can come through, whether it's in your ads or in your conversations on the phone or what have you. I mean, people can start to detect that and it can turn them off. So, you know, I, it's it's hard to do when you're in that position, but if you can just kind of have the attitude of, you know, if it sells, that's awesome. If it doesn't, you know, I'll move on to the next guy. Um, it, it might be helpful. I think that's really, really great advice. And um, I see it all the time, especially with the newbies. They're so excited to get their first sale and then they're so self-conscious and they lack the confidence to actually get that first sale. So they're afraid they're going to do something wrong. And then they feel like, oh, the person didn't buy it. So they did something wrong. And that, that first rejection is, is such a, uh, a punch to the gut. And it takes a few punches of, to the gut to actually kind of get a little bit immune to it. But then your energy level goes down. So you're not posting as many ads and you kind of don't, you want to avoid that punch. And so all of a sudden you're doing these things that, you know, you're checking email, you're, uh, you know, you're working on your website, you're doing everything except selling all of a sudden because you don't want that rejection anymore because you're not used to it. And then suddenly you're like, well, this, I'm not, I'm not selling and it's frustrating and it's taking too long where, you know, if I guarantee if I stood behind your computer and saw what you were doing, um, you know, you're probably not, you know, marketing as hard as you should be or aggressively as you should be. And you're missing that piece. Um, where the buyer feels that you really, you know, want that sale more than you want to help them. Right. And they feel it. Scott Todd, does any of this, you know, resonate with you? Yeah. I mean, like, I think that there's a, a lot of key points here. One, one is um, it's easy when you're having pain to avoid the pain, right? Like you, you will at all costs avoid the pain. So essentially, you know, what, what you're trying to do is you're trying to do other work that, that, you know, you put it off. And so then, you know, instead of marketing, you don't, you don't market. Instead of doing other things, you just, you just go do something, you just go do something else. The, the other thing that I, I think that Scott Bossman said was, you know, sometimes the numbers on the deal in the beginning are not necessarily the numbers that you want, right? Like, and I, and I talk all the time about like, if you're, if you're saying I want, or I want this amount down, or I want cash, well, it's not about you. It's about, you know, the, it's about the market. It's about the, the people buying the property. It's definitely not about you and your wants and your, your desires. Uh, you you kind of have to make it as an irresistible deal. And then, you know, to, to tie back in what Eric said, you know, if you're sounding too desperate, if you're, if you're trying to chase this thing and like you're feeling desperate or you're feeling like, man, if I don't sell this thing fast, I'm never going to be able to continue. Or, you know, uh, my spouse is going to like cream me if I don't get this thing sold, just relax, take a chill pill. And, you know, it will, it will happen 
it just has to happen because you're marketing every day. You're following up with people, even though you don't like to follow up with people, it sucks. But you know, the thing is, Mark, that once you do the deal, like once you get that first deal done, well, now you have what I, what I would call as the art of the first deal, right? Like now you're more confident. Now, now man, like you, you feel unstoppable. Your confidence is through the roof. And once you get that, it's important, you know, like it's easier to sustain it or to keep it going. The, the secret is getting the first one. And sometimes you just have to kind of like, I hate to say it, but like almost give it away, if you will. Like just put it out into the universe and, you know, make it $99 down, make it $50 down, do, do something to try to change up what you're doing that's not working. Yeah, it's so true. And I, I remember talking to a coaching client uh, last week and he's like, this property's not selling. I'm like, well, how are you selling? He's like, well, I need cash. I'm like, well, the market doesn't care what you need, right? The market wants what it wants and the market wants easy terms, right? So sell it for easy terms, get the down payment, get the monthly payments. If you need the cash, then sell the note on tlfolio.com and get your money, redeploy it. And it's all good. Like there's so many different ways you can skin the cat, but you can't let what you want dictate how you are going to sell it. You have to give the market what they want. And in this business, the market wants it to be irresistible, right? Scott Bossman, does any of this resonate with you? Oh, for sure. I mean, early on I was uh, paralyzed by, by the details of some of these deals, right? Um, and then I just had to remind myself, you know, keep it simple. Um, Make it irresistible. You got to make it irresistible for these folks. Um, uh, you know, it's it, it's moving one foot in front of the other and and making those contacts. And you know, we talked last night also about tire kickers. There's a lot of frustration with with tire kickers when people are trying to sell. And uh, I think a lot of people are expending a lot of energy with. Uh, a lot of different folks or a lot of different leads and having a difficult time with the tire kickers. And I just tried to encourage them last night that, you know, it comes with time, but you'll be able to recognize a tire quicker a lot sooner in, in a conversation and move to the next customer or move to the next step uh, without trying to, you know, rope that person in and buying your property. And I'm just, I'm more transparent now with people. If they call me and say, you know, uh, I really love this property and I, I asked them and interview them, uh, you know, and determine within a few minutes that it's not an appropriate property for them. I try to be transparent with them and tell them that and uh, keep, keep track of the, of, of your leads because you never know uh, who might be in the market two weeks from now. That's why you have to hit the, hit the buyer's list and hit, hit their email inbox every week. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's so much of it is mindset. I mean, Barryland Aaron, what's your mindset when it comes to sales? Well, I was actually going to add to that. And in, in fact, um, the mindset is that contact, that constant contact with people. Um, because there's a lot of people that I thought were tire kickers. You know, I, I've just had two recent sales that were both kind of the same kind of situation where there were people I talked to a while ago. Um, one guy looked in my, in my CRM and I noticed I've, I've been talking to this guy for like off and on for a year. You know, he's contacted me on various properties. Um, just nothing was quite exactly right, no matter how I tried to close him, you know, and I didn't overpressure him, but I tried, tried to close him. Um, and eventually I got one that was just the exact right thing for him. And then it was easy. We had a relationship, you know, we talked several times, that sort of thing. Um, I've had that twice in the last... I don't know, a week or two. Um, so, you know, some of the people you talk to today, they may buy from you. They may be a sale, but they just might not be that sale today. Um, you know, and also I want to interject a, a book that I just listened to and I kind of recommend it on Audible because for our business, it might be there. It's kind of geared towards somebody that would do a lot of cold calling maybe and we don't so much, but um, it very much encap encapsulates all the things we had just talked about here. And that's uh, fanatical prospecting 
by Jeb Blunt. Um, if you listen to that, that'll really give you the mind frame of how you need to be marketing and um, you know how intense you really should be doing the things. And by doing those things, you can actually um, quit procrastinating on them and, and actually accomplish them in you know, a very small amount of time, then move on with your day and have accomplished your goal um, on the marketing piece of it, um, which will lead to those sales, you know, so. Yeah, I, I love it. Thanks for the tip. Um, Eric Peterson, what's your mindset when it comes to sales? Well, I think I just want to emphasize um, <clears throat> kind of what Scott and Aaron have, have both already mentioned um, in this, the kind of concept or the mindset of just um, being in constant communication. Um, I think uh, maybe early on, it's, it's hard to wrap your head around that you're going to be contacting all these people on a regular basis, whether that's through your deal of the week or some kind of other, you know, welcome sequence or what have you. Um, but building those systems to track those leads and maintain those leads. I mean, I can't, I can't count how many times I've responded to somebody and, and kind of put them through my, my system of, you know, communication over time and they've never replied to me but they're on my buyers list and sometime down the road all of a sudden they come back because they got a deal of the week that you know just speaks to them that particular day and and now they're ready to buy and you know the only interaction I ever had with them was you know that first email they sent me asking about this Craigslist ad and because I have a system in place where I take those emails, I add them to a buyer's list, I communicate with them on a regular basis and, you know, go through all these steps, you know, that, that warms those leads up over time and they, they remember me. And, you know, when the time is right, um, that's when they come back. So now obviously they don't all come back, but um, every now and then they do. And it, it makes a difference, you know, it, it takes time to build it up, but it's, it's worthwhile. Yeah. I mean, Scott, remember the, uh, the podcast we had, I can't remember the name of the couple now, but their philosophy was collect as many no's as possible. Yeah. Because it gets you closer to the yes. Right. And I love, I love that attitude where instead of resenting the tire kickers, they were collecting the tire kickers because they knew that as you know, eventually once they got to like their 10th no that day, or whatever it was, you know, they were that much closer to a yes. And that's what Eric is kind of saying is like, I, I don't really care if they, they buy or not that day. My job is to stay, you know, in contact with them, warm them up, warm them up until the point where they're, you know, so we have something we can get them and serve them. And then I've, I'm the one that keeps showing up consistently for them. And when they're ready, they're ready and I'm here for them. And, uh, and I don't sort of view them as a tire kicker anymore. Now, now they're a legitimate, you know, buyer. I mean, you, you remember that Scott? Yeah. Yeah. I think what was it getting to know, I think, or something like that. I can't yeah, remember. Getting to know, I think. Yeah. I, I, Mark, I think that, I think that a lot of people and, and like, I'm generalizing here, but I mean, in, in all the people that I've talked to about this business, I think people in a way think that this could be, or may, may act like an e-commerce play, right? Like someone shows up to your website and then they get to your website and I mean, like, okay, they're just going to write out a check and, and buy from you. And really that's not, that's not the reality, right? Like they're, look at um, realtor.com. There is no buy it now button on realtor.com. Why? Because it's just like real estate. People do not just blindly, you know, like buy immediately when they see your ad. It takes you building a relationship. My average sale um, from the time that someone enters my funnel to the time that they buy for land is 11 days. That's the average. Remember that. So, you know, essentially some people are faster, some people are slower, but 11 days. And I can tell you that we're almost talking to these people almost every single day. Now that said, we don't give up on a sale. And I, I mean, I, I, in flight school, I go into detail and I show this and I show my, um, kind of my pipeline, but literally, over the last couple of years, we don't consider a sale dead until we can't get anywhere for about 45 days. So think about that one for a second. It takes us 45 days to wave off a sale and say it's not gonna happen. But when we do get a sale, it's not instant. It takes on average 11 days, right? But 
again, some of those people we've talked to for years, right? Like it's just the way that it is. And you just have to understand. I mean, the, the sales whisper says it the best, right? Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but the sales whisperer, uh, you know, he's got great material, but also at the same time, he's right. Don't take it to heart. Yeah. And, and Wes is also like, you've, you know, nobody wants to deal with, deal with a salesman, right? When we think of salesman, we think of somebody who's sleazy or, you know, pushy or aggressive, but we don't think of our doctors that way. What does a doctor do? They ask questions. They diagnose your problem. They give you a solution. So they're there to serve you. And so you almost have to put that kind of hat on um, when you're on the phone. And one of my favorite modules at boot camp is when we actually, you know, go into, you know, great depth and, and work on the actual sales uh, script. And uh, it's so helpful. So speaking of boot camp, by the way, um, if you haven't gone to the landgeek.com forward slash boot camp and reserved your spot for Vegas, which is coming up, by the way. Which um, I want to know why. Why you haven't done that? Yeah, I don't, yeah, seriously. We've got 10 spots left, so grab your spot uh, today and, and don't get locked out uh, for sure. And because um, that, that room is really almost full. So, but boot camp's great because that's, that's something that we, we really work on um, a lot is the, just the whole sales process and not just the nuts and bolts, but also the mindset as well. And because we have the time, more time than we do on podcasts to really delve deep into it and, um, and, and, you know, help you individually as you're going through your, your, uh, your training on that. So what advice, Bearland, would you give someone new that is struggling with sales? Um, I think... The advice would be kind of two, twofold, um, and it really goes to what we've been saying here today, and that is to just keep at what you're doing. Just just keep pushing. Um, don't give up. Don't be discouraged, and don't let that come through as an emotion when you're speaking to your customers. Um, and also. Uh, actually, I forgot my second point. <laughs> um, so it's one fold, I guess. Just, you know, just keep, just talk to them, keep talking to them, um, touch them every so often and it will happen for you. I mean, there, it, it just will. So Eric, what's, what would be your advice? The first thing I would say is increase the number of ads you're putting out. Um, you know, if you're, if you're putting out, I don't know, 20 ads a week, you know, double that and, uh, you know, see how many more leads you're getting because of that. And, uh, you know, secondly, don't get distracted. Don't, because you're getting so many no's or you're not making the sale, don't move on to something else and let it go, you know, just keep at it and, uh, make it a part of your routine, um, build a system around it so that you can manage it. And uh, you're going to get there. Yeah. How about you, Scott Bossman? <clears throat> so I would say two things. I would say uh, there's a little bit of tendency for folks when they're on Facebook and Craigslist to keep it in the email or keep it in Facebook Messenger. So try to get these folks on the phone. You're going to be able to uh, diagnose them, as you say, Mark, a lot easier over the phone, uh, you know, and, and try, to, try to fit their needs when they're on the phone with you. And then I would just, you know, sell houses. So, I mean, Scott Todd taught me a long time ago that if you get their email address, that's a success. You know, you, you get their email address, you add that onto your buyer list, you hit them up two to four weeks from now, two years from now, and it's a sale. That was a success. So that's, that's what I would say. I love it. Scott Todd, how about you? Um, I, I would say that, I'd say that you just gotta, you get, just gotta keep going. You just, just got to relax, chill out. And like Scott just said, like, you know, uh, figure out how you identify success. I identify success one of two ways. One, I make the sale or two, I get their email address to follow up with them. You, you don't get married. Well, let me back up. Most people don't get married after the first date. And, 
you know, what, what you're asking someone to do here is you're literally asking them to, to marry you financially. And what I mean by that is you're asking them to commit to you for, for a substantial amount of money. Granted, it might be $100. Granted, it might be $50. That's not the way people think. They think long term. Uh, what what is this going to cost me at the same time? But that's why the monthly fees and monthly costs need to be low. Now that said, you know you've got to you've got to look at this from a longer term perspective. You got to dig in, do more of what's what you feel is not working, like place more ads, like Eric said, do whatever. You got to dig in. You got to you got to push harder to get to the other side. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, one of the things that I, I love about meditation is um, it, it allows me to have perspective. So I don't let one thing in my day affect everything. And the, the reason I bring up meditation is I'll notice in my meditation, I'll start, you know, thinking about the thing that's bothering me. And I'll, I'm like, why do I keep thinking about this? It's in it's, it's affecting everything. It's, it's affecting my mood. It's affecting my energy level. Um, you know, instead of doing my real work, I keep wanting to check my phone and going on Facebook and, you know, checking email, did I get a good email? And oftentimes when we first start and you start getting a tire kicker, you know, somebody not responding, somebody just, you know, saying, Hey, I'm interested in disappearing. Um, that one thing, don't let it affect everything. Just keep doing what you know, Eric and, and Aaron and Scott and Scott are saying is you just keep plugging away until eventually it'll happen and, and have that sort of mindset. Um, Eric, does, do you ever like have that issue where like, it's like one thing sort of just ruins everything? Um, I think I can let, yeah, one, you know, bad situation or whatever occupy my my thoughts and, and kind of everything for a short time. But in most cases, um, I can get over it fairly quickly and, and move on. So, um, you know, I know for certain people, it can go on for long, long periods of time. But um, I'd say, I guess I, I tend to get over it pretty quickly. Yeah. How about you, Bearland Aaron? I'm like Eric. I get over it pretty quickly. Um, I used to, things used to bother me for a long time. I had a sales manager a long time ago that kind of taught me his technique of just, you know, things will, he'll let things bother him for like three seconds, you know, so he processed it, then it's done because it, you can't, you can't um, do anything more about it at the, at the moment. So you can't let it consume all of your mental energy and you can just kind of count like one, two, three. Okay. It's behind me. Let's go. And it takes really years of practice of doing that to accomplish it effectively. But yeah, I mean, very rarely does something like destroy my day. It's got to be a pretty big, pretty big thing anymore. So yeah, not so much, but it, it's definitely a problem for a lot of people. Scott Bossman, how about you? Does any of this resonate? Oh, for sure. That's like, that's uh, like my new phrase now. Does any of this resonate? <laughs> this definitely resonates. I got to give a shout out to my wife here because she and I have a saying. It's uh, fight, your bat or, uh, fight your battles, right? Uh, or choose your battles, sorry. Um, I've tried to apply that in my relationship and work and with the land business. And, and we always ask each other, okay, you're, you're having – an issue with this are you going to remember this in two years right like this this little this little stressful moment that you're letting ruin your entire day are you going to remember this in two years uh let it go try to move on and and do that in the land business too uh choose your battles don't let you know one or two dips in the road ruin everything be forward thinking and just know two three years from now you know we're going to be celebrating successes, not these little failures that, that keep us in a rut. I love it. When, when my wife and I now argue, the, the rule is, um, I, I'd say, Alexa, you know, play Enya, and we have to slow dance. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a pattern interrupt. Enya. Enya. In, in the first five seconds, like, we're, like, looking at each other with daggers in our eyes. And then we kind of relax. We're like, this is hilarious. And, and I just the had to like, mute Alexa, by the way. Oh, sorry. And the, and the kids are like, what are you doing? You guys are so weird. Stop dancing. You're so embarrassing. 
<laughs> teenagers. Yes. That's that's my teenage voice. I have three Scott, of them. In the house. I know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Scott Todd, you got teenagers. What what oh, about you? Do. You does any of this uh, ring true for Mark, you? Or there's there's a are movie you just completely uh, impervious to to the rejection. And there's a movie. There's a movie. Right. It's called Frozen by Disney. And there's a song. Let it go. Let it go. Turn away and slam the door. Disney teaches you everything that you need to know. That really is a wise movie, isn't it? It is, isn't it? It really is. Um, We've yeah, got Hakuna Matata, too. Yeah, see? Uh, yeah, between Hakuna Matata and Let It Go, you're pretty much sure to get a day. <laughs> a productive day, right? So I, I, guess, I guess if we we're, if were going to break down the whole sales frustration – right? Number one, you got to look at your activities. Um, you probably need to be posting more ads. Number two, you can't be so emotionally connected um, to getting that sale where it's about you and it's not about them. Number three, you've got to price it for the market. And then number four, um, you got to let it go, right? And just start collecting your nose and it's a numbers game. Um, anything else you guys want to add to that? I think that's it, man. Is that it? Uh, who's, who's ready for a, a nightcap? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> nice transition there, Mark. Speaking of nightcaps, Scott Bossman and the Zen Master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing, are uh, for in the Land Geek Mastermind Facebook group are doing every Wednesday night or Thursday night um, a, a, uh, a nightcap at 10 Eastern. A 10 Eastern. So the two of them, Scott, just kind of give everybody a little taste of what Nightcap is all about. Wait, you're on, you're on mute, Scott. I promise you it's not just Scott and Mike on mute. So, so, oh, right, right. Sorry about that. So, yeah, this is uh, Nightcap is just uh, a way for the community to tune in to see uh, Mike and I at the end of our day winding down, having a drink talking about successes and failures and frustrations in the land business, but mostly successes. Uh, we're, it, it's, it's kind of a talk show late night, you know, format, really laid back. We're going to have some special guests and uh, we've gotten a lot of good feedback on it so far. It's, it's, it's pretty fun. And uh, if you, if you tune in, you'll have a chance to win a free one hour coaching call with Mike or myself. Uh, we get, we're going to give one of those away every month. Uh, so for every four shows or so, um, but in any event, that's, that's what it is. And, uh, we, we appreciate, we appreciate any suggestions. If you guys want us to cover a topic, uh, or, or whatnot, uh, we'll, we'll get that covered in nightcap. Fantastic. Oh, by the way, dirt rich is coming out in about four weeks. So, um, I'm excited about that. So Eric, yeah, it's just in, the mastermind group. So if you're not in the mastermind group, um, go to thelandgeek.com, I think forward slash mastermind and join there. Um, Scott Todd's like laughing. But I, so I, I love that show. It's one of my favorite shows of the week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, the mastermind group, I don't think it's enough love. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of content in there between the weekly, you know, mastermind calls on Wednesday that get recorded um, all the chatter and all the, the help in there. And then you've got your, you know, people that are wholesale deals, which I know you can do in the free group and the official land geek masks, you know, wealth motivation, wealth creation group, whatever it's called. Um, you know, people will do that in there, but it's not, it doesn't have the same gravitas with the people that are in that mastermind group. It's smaller, it's more intimate. People know each other from boot camp. Um, it's a little bit more serious, I'd say. And, uh, and now there's, you know, nightcap included. And we'll be doing other things in there as well to keep adding more value. So, um, yeah, pretty good. Are, are we good, Scott Bossman? How, how do you feel about this roundtable? I thought it was great. I think uh, people are going to walk away with some good, uh, good uh, talking points about selling, take-home points. Yeah, I mean, are you, you know, you haven't been on a lot of the, the roundtable podcasts. I mean, are you prepared mentally to go after Eric Peterson right now 
in a, in a very critical sort of way. To go after him, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to throw Eric under the bus. I, I'm not, I'm not cruel like you guys. I'm, you know, Eric. I mean, Scott's high there are really compassionate. I think. Yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, is does somebody have a quote of the day or something? Is that uh, is that what we do in? No, that's no. Mike Zano's kind of thing. Uh, that's Mike Zano's week week attempt at yeah. uh, tip of the week. You know, uh, Barry and Aaron already gave a tip of the week with the book. Uh, I have a great Jeff quote. Austin. Can I have a quote of the day? Sure. Right. So I came up with this very profound statement this morning as, as I was walking down the hall with Millie, who had her hip replacement. And I said to Millie, Millie, even people with short legs can take big steps. That's a good quote. Even people with short legs can take big steps. And it's a very visual quote as well. Isn't it profound? I, I mean, I, I, I mean, Mark, Mark, th think about what just happened here. Scott Bossman shared with everybody his own quote. <laughs> right? Like, it's not like a Buddha quote here. We're talking about like a Scott Bossman quote. It's, there are a few of those. I, I, it's the, the depth of it is starting to hit me now. Right. I mean, this is, this is like, this is a monumental moment, right? here. <laughs> All right. Like, I mean, we, we don't need Tony Robbins. We don't need Buddha. We have dude, buddy, Scott Bossman. I, I mean, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm just like floored, man. I, I, you're speechless, Mark. You're not even talking. I, I mean, I'm not often speechless, but this is, this is a momentous event. When someone comes on and, and has their own quote, they're, they're quoting themselves. Yeah. I mean, that, that's like, I don't know. That's like, who does that? Dude, buddy does it. Dude, I'll buddy. Do it I will do it again. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to really have to get him to keep coming on these podcasts. I'm telling you. He's at his clinic right now. Uh, I don't know how, how much time, you know, we can take from him, but that's awesome, Scott Bossman. Yeah. Thank you. you know, you know, anytime Aaron, like, you know, says anything, just say, look, go back to this podcast and the end of it and say, look, look at the respect I'm getting. <laughs> yeah, that only lasts a week. So right. everybody's respect is reset to zero, I think, each week. I, I think the, Scott the Todd makes my negative, I think, at the beginning of the week, but... He's always he's always giving me a hard time, thinking me? the bear's going to come lash out at somebody. I don't know. Yeah, see, he he's getting fired up, Mark. We're getting him fired up. <laughs> uh -oh. yeah, let's let's, let's, uh, let's transition to Eric Peterson, since the, the group has already decided that tips a week should only be between Eric and Mike, and then let the you know the rest of us decide. So, Eric, what is your tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? All right. So first of all, I want everyone to know I am taking Mike's spot this week as he decided not to call in a quote. So I'm stepping up and I'm going to give a tip of the week instead since he's not with us. So um, coda.io, C-O-D-A dot I-O. Um, it's online documents, kind of like Google Docs, um, with spreadsheets incorporated into it. Um, you can create, um, special views when you share docs, um, with your team. So if you have a table, maybe you have, um, a view that's set for, you know, your VA to look at that table in that document, as opposed to, you know, what you see, maybe you see a different grouping of the data or what have you. So it's a little bit like Airtable with the views and how you can set those up. But then, you know, you have the, the functions of a document where you can just, you know, type text, but then you can also add um, spreadsheets to it to a certain degree of, um, you know, with, with data and, and drop down menus and, and different things like that. So, um, I think it could be pretty useful in potentially 
working with your VAs um, through dis different systems, um, maybe some, some training materials, um, maybe some way to track some information, uh, different things like that. So I think it's worth checking out. It looks pretty cool. Scott, what do you think? I think it's phenomenal. What are you talking about, Mark? Well, of course you think it's phenomenal. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> it's very well designed. Um, and it's, it's pretty new. My, my only, you know, initial negative about it um, is it looks Trello-ish, but I don't see any zaps, right? Like I don't see it where the, you know, where the automation is where you can start talking to my other, my other apps. Uh, maybe, maybe they have one in there. I'd have to go to Zapier and see, but it doesn't look like it. Yeah, it, it may be too new to be over on uh, Zapier yet. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't looked any for any Zaps yet. Bearland Aaron, what are your, what are your thoughts? Um, I like it so far. Um, you can, it looks like you can kind of use it to create your very, you like your own super customizable project management. Um, you know, it's got some, some things where you can use some sliders, uh, to track some progress on things as well as, um, some Trello looking cards with, uh, some calendar that, you know, you can, you can put some tasks in and, and timelines and that sort of thing. Um, that just looks like one function, but it's pretty cool. I'm liking it. Huh. Think Minecraft for docs. I like that. Think Minecraft for docs. Scott Bossman, what do you think? I think it's definitely worth a look. I mean, uh, there's so much of this stuff out there. Uh, it, it's pretty phenomenal in this day, day and age, how many free tools out there there are to help you in your business. So um, I like checking these new things out and I'll definitely take a peek at it. Well, I think we have a, uh, a show title. Even people with short legs can take big steps, Scott Bossman. So I want to thank Scott for uh for showing up and contributing to the roundtable podcast bearland aaron eric peterson scott todd um just a reminder to everybody the next flight school is starting soon if you want to learn more about flight school just go to the forward slash training schedule a call with scott bossman or mike zano and uh and learn all about it maybe you just have a question about the, the toolkit um you can also go to the forward slash training and, and schedule a call with Mike or Scott. Um, if you're not automating your payments, again, go to geekpay.io. And of course, um, you got to give Scott Todd some love at uh, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek and start marketing your properties on landmoto.com uh, for sure. So guys, are, are we good? We're good, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Good. We're good. good. All right. Well, I want to thank all the listeners please do us a small favor. Just subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free our $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course. Um, please do that. And one of these days, I'll be really happy to say, when you do that, we're going to give you a free copy of Dirt Rich, which I can't wait to uh, say, which is going to be about four weeks. If you want to start pre-ordering Dirt Rich, just email us, support at thelandgeek.com. And we'll get you on the list. All right. Are you guys ready? We're ready, Mark. One, two, three. Let, let, let freedom, freedom ring. 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 Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I, I'm so grateful for my passive income right now. It's like this... <laughs> there, there's no way anyone's going to listen to this podcast and be like, Hey, you know what? Uh, we, we should get these guys their own show on uh, CNBC. Just I think you're wrong there. I think you're wrong. You think so? You think yeah, we could go so. national with this podcast? I, I think we could. Yeah. We just, we just need uh, a little bit of luck. Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, Scott, you flew to, uh, <laughs> To Venice, Florida yesterday? Yes, I uh, took took my wife up 
and um I'm like, all right, we, we attempted to do it on Sunday, but the winds were a little, little rougher than ideal. So I said, ah, let's just wait. We waited a day. We, we went out yesterday and um, flew down. It was about a, it was about a 30 minute flight mark. And um, man, oh man, going down there, it, it wasn't, I didn't think it was that bad. Like, you know, there's, there's these things in the earth called, uh, thermals and basically it's like you know the the heat from the earth is rising and it kind of pushes you up and down a little bit and uh, the thermals were were there I mean it wasn't anything that's outside the normal but my wife got a little motion sick in the uh, air and uh, that was not pretty and then I, while she was getting sick I was trying to fly us towards the water which would be smoother air got over the got over the uh, water smoother air landed ate an awesome lunch right on the beach then uh took off and just went right up the coastline right back into the uh airport about 40 mile a 40 minute uh trip right up the coastline over beautiful water nice smooth air it was really cool i have a feeling no one's gonna want to talk to you at boot camp and maybe maybe i i don't know just just that jerk er, i mean seriously like I'm 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 just enraged right now on jealousy. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it, Mark. Hey, comparison's the thief of happiness, Mark. I know, and it you know I'm gonna do one, two, three, and let it go. But my there you go. <laughs> God, I'll tell you what. I'm not gonna let my wife listen to this podcast for sure. Uh, you know, I can talk to her though. I can talk to her for you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna. Uh, I I can barely cut a steak. Let alone fly a plane. <laughs> she's got to. She's got to uh, take take your meals for you. I mean, she's she's like, you know, take smaller bites, Mark, and don't choke. Don't choke, honey. Don't choke. I mean, that's crazy. I, I'm lucky my kids even drive with me. To, ah, you to know, fly. No way. Don't worry, Mark. You'll find your thing one day. I mean, one other day. than land. Well, other than land. <laughs> other than land? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm like, I'm yeah, an inch wide and a mile deep. I, I have no interest in, I just want to get better at land investing and land teaching. Get a motorcycle. Oh, uh, see, see, see what just happened there. He's like, he, he's like, I, I, Scott, you go do that. I just want to get better at doing what I do, land <laughs> investing. Because I'm going to beat you in land investing. That's what I took that No, mark. no, it's, it's, it's a completely, <laughs> it's, it's a defense, actually. I'd love to go outside my comfort zone and, and learn something new, like, you know jujitsu or flying but instead i find myself looking at just focusing on land investing apps like coda.io i'm like oh i wonder if i could uh you know create a new system here mark you know you actually sound a lot like martha stewart man like i just want to focus on my salad (laughs) boy that hurt maybe you could get into like electric bike cycling or something I, I took I took a ride yesterday on my electric bike. It was beautiful out. It was it was really nice, and you know. But after a while, like it it, it starts getting lonely when it's just me and a bunch of elderly people at the the coffee shop in the middle of the day. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. I, I I need one of you guys to move out here. I, you know, I hey, call my buddies. Oh, I got, I've, I've got a meeting with my boss at one. I can't I can't meet. Call another buddy. Oh, I'm. I, 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 I just too busy. I'm just too busy. Not everybody can be like you, Mark, get a real job. I'm like, come on. <laughs> get a real job. That's an insult. It really is. I don't Why know. would they say that to you, Mark? Cause they're jealous. Comparison is a thief of happiness. Cause I, now I'm just forwarding them pictures of you on the beach at lunch, I'm just pretending it's mine. My life, my life. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll make sure they're very generic from here on out. All right, just, good. just flew to lunch. Don't hate me. Uh, don't hate me. Seriously, that's that could be like a meme. Yeah, don't hate me. All right. Speaking of lunch, I'm gonna go uh, go eat something very healthy. Why? Why not? I gotta. I got. I got to look svelte for uh, boot camp in Vegas. All right, go, go eat some foo foo meal or something. I don't know. 
All right, I gotta go eat some kale. <laughs> it's always fun to pick on kale. I feel bad for you, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again. I'll see you later. See ya. All right. See ya. All right. Bye. Bye.